Do you actually need a special camera, lens, microphone, and an Instagram husband to make high quality videos for YouTube? Welcome back to my channel, you guys. I'm Amy from Rebel Nutrition, and I help nutritionists and health coaches create profitable online businesses. But even if you're not a nutritionist or a health coach, you're just interested in making YouTube videos, you're gonna like this video. So one of the most common questions I get about YouTube is what kinds of equipment and gear I'm using to make my videos. And I have to be quite honest because what I use now is very, very different from what I used three or four years ago when I started my YouTube channel. So I'm actually going to be sharing kind of a side-by-side -side comparison of what I used then and what I use now. So no matter where you're at in your YouTube making journey, either one of these is going to apply to you. Obviously what I used three years ago is much more low budget and kind of easier and simpler. And what I use now, to be quite honest, disclaimer, um, half of it I don't even do because my husband now works for Rebel Nutrition full time and he's a videographer so he does kind of some of the photo editing side but I'm still going to share the equipment that we use nonetheless. Alright so first things first the most important part of all of this is what to use to actually film your videos. So three or four years ago, I can't remember exactly when I started, I actually filmed all of my videos from my iPhone. So you guys, if you're starting out and you feel like a big barrier to getting high quality videos, just use your iPhone or use your smartphone. I think iPhones are a little bit a lot of bit better quality for if you're going to film videos from them, but you can literally get started with probably whatever you already have. And now the camera that we use to record the videos that I'm doing now, they're actually from Eric's camera. So his camera that he uses right now to film these videos and to take a lot of my Instagram photos is a Sony A7 III. Yes, I am reading it from the computer because I don't even know what it's called. Sony A7 III and the lens is a 24 to 70 GM. By the way, you guys, all of this will be linked in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. Okay, now for sound. And some people might even argue that the sound is actually more important than the video. Um, but I personally, when I got started, you guys, I didn't use anything other than the, just the regular microphone that was on my um, iPhone. So you can totally just get started with that. It does get a little bit tricky when you are filming videos outside. You're definitely going to notice an issue with the sound. And another thing that might happen too if you're using that is like if you're in an echoey room, it might sound really bad. And I don't think you should let that you know, prevent you from getting started, but just know that like, as you start to improve the quality of your videos, um, I think the sound does matter. So these days we actually use two different microphones. I'm using this one right now that is the Rode Lavalier Go, and I'm obviously using this one because it clips onto my shirt. Um, this was actually the one that we traveled to Hawaii with, and we don't have our other one. So this one works really well. I actually plug it into my phone, as you guys can see right here, and record the audio on there. And then what he does, what Eric does when it's done, is he just kind of combines the audio from here with the video recording, because the sound on this is a lot better than just the sound that's pulling from the camera. Um, but the other microphone that we use is called the Rode Video Micro, and that microphone actually clips onto the camera. So if you don't want to actually have like one clipped onto your shirt and you're talking pretty close to the camera, that would also be a really good option for you. All right, you guys, next up is the tripod. So for those of you who are camera illiterate like myself, the, the tripod is actually what holds the, everybody knows what a tripod is, right? The tripod holds the camera. So when I <laughs> was first getting started with my YouTube channel, I did not have a tripod. Um, most of the time I would prop my uh, iPhone up on like some boxes or books or like whatever way that I could get it to to work. Um, but then as I slowly progressed, I started using a Joby, which is kind of like a little mini tripod. I really like the Joby and I actually still really like using it, especially if I am um, doing like a vlog style and I want to hold my iPhone and talk into that rather than like the camera because sometimes Eric's camera is really heavy and it like I need to work on my arm strength, clearly. Now, as you upgrade a little bit more and you want one of the tripods that I'm actually using right now that's higher up and you can really change the height of it to have it be as tall as you, um, this tripod is called the Manfrotto B Free. Um, I don't really know what else to say about it other than it looks really good, it works really well, I like it. Um, 
<laughs> if you, especially if you're somebody who is recording all of your own videos and you want to be standing for a majority of the time, I think that th this one is a really, really good option. Um, another thing that obviously I did not use when I was first starting out, but that we use pretty frequently now, especially when Eric and I are getting any sort of vlog footage or he's getting like some cinematic footage of, you know, wherever we're traveling to is a gimbal. So the gimbal is basically, I don't know how else to describe it, except call it like a stick that the camera is attached to. And he can like basically be running around with this camera on a stick and it stays level. That's like the worst description. Anybody who's like actually a techie person watching this is gonna be like, oh my God, you're such an idiot. Um, but anyways, the gimbal that we use, which gets amazing footage, I have to say, is called the Ronin S. Um, I really like it. I don't ever use it, but it makes beautiful, beautiful video. Oh, one more thing I thought of that I would just throw in here too is that we also sometimes use a GoPro, if especially when we're in Hawaii, to record any sort of footage like in the ocean, if we're surfing. Um, so we have the GoPro Hero 7, and I really like that. I think it's just awesome. I mean, that's not gonna be necessary for everybody, but if you are somebody who travels a lot, if you're a travel vlogger, um, or if you wanna get like underwater shots or you're doing some crazy stuff, a GoPro is really fun to have, and it, it kind of like, allows you to get some crazier footage when you like probably wouldn't want to take your camera. All right, next up, editing your video. So when I first got started with YouTube, I edited all of my videos using iMovie. Um, I have a Mac, so iMovie is free and it's really easy to figure out. I could even figure it out, um, super, super simple. And that worked really well. So if you have a Mac, you already have that on there, you're good to go, it's super basic. Um, but these days, Eric uses Final Cut Pro. Um, I have nothing really to say about that other than it makes good videos. I think it's pretty similar. Like I've seen sort of what it looks like and it looks pretty similar to the interface of iMovie. Um, but if you're looking for, honestly, if you are starting out, I would just say stick with iMovie or whatever the comparable you know, program is if you're, if you're on a PC, but Final Cut Pro I'm sure has like way more features. So if you're fancy, use that. Okay, next up, making the thumbnail for YouTube. So this one's actually pretty cool because what I use then and what I use now is exactly the same. I use Canva, I love Canva, and you guys, I think it's, they have a free version. I have the paid one so I can put in all of my like brand colors and logos and things like that. But you can totally start and make your thumbnails for free. And they even have like a little section that says YouTube thumbnail templates. And you can go in there and find a template that you like, change out the colors, add in your own photo. That's my lunch. And it's super, super easy. And if you do it in Canva too, it, are, it will already be like the right dimensions for YouTube so you don't have to crop it or figure out what the dimensions are or anything like that. Okay, next up, this is kind of like post-processing after your YouTube video is ready and you want to share it on, let's say, Instagram stories. What I use now to make like a really cute, kind of fancy looking promotional video, I use the Mojo app and I love this app. It's not free, but I think it's only like $30 for the whole year, but it makes some really, really professional looking videos that you can put like text and your brand colors on. And it's just, I mean, I love them. You can just look at the templates and see how good they look. They're amazing. I definitely did not do any promotional video type thing like this when I first got started. So don't feel like you need to do that. But if you want to, if you want to play around with um, that app, or if you want to just use that to make videos for like Instagram, for example, I think it's really worth it. And it's a good way to make your content look a little bit more professional and polished, even if you don't have, you know, a designer or somebody making those promotional videos for you. Okay, last but not least, how do I think of good topics to make YouTube videos about? So to be quite honest, there's a lot of ways that you could do this, so I'm gonna just tell you guys what I do. There's a couple different things. Number one, I just make videos based on what I feel like talking about. That's like, I talk about this all the time and it's kind of a, I guess you could say, intuitive business strategy of mine is that I take everything that I learn from you know, business coaches and things like that with a grain of salt and ultimately I do what I feel like doing. <laughs> so that might work for you. Um, but number two, you can also look at like what other video topics are doing well. If you're just getting started, you can look at what other people's video topics seem to be doing well and are getting a lot of views. If you have already been making videos, like go back into your um, analytics if you want to or just look at the number of views and see which ones have performed well, because that's clearly you know, what, what people are looking for. 
Last but not least, this is probably the number one way that I figure out topics to make videos on, and that is just thinking about the things that my audience asks me all the time. So that's literally how I thought of the topic for this video. People are asking me all the time what kinds of camera and microphone and lens and editing software I use to make videos. So I figure that's a perfect topic for a YouTube video. That's what I'm gonna make it about. So really just think about, you know, go back through your DMs or your emails or wherever you're chatting with your audience and, and see the types of questions that people are asking you all the time. And it's a great way to like answer the question once and then anytime somebody has that question, you can just send them the link to your video. All right, you guys, everything I mentioned in today's video is going to be linked below so you can check it out. And let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Let me know what you guys are using for your YouTube channels. And then also, if you haven't yet, be sure to hit the red subscribe button and the bell next to it so you never miss a video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.